It is no surprise that firefighting is a dangerous job. Every year, on-the-job injuries and fatalities are at the top of the statistics. Proper aircraft firefighting, rescue, and safety training can significantly safeguard against potential hazards. Civilian and military aircraft can create hazardous conditions not normally encountered by firefighters in off-airport emergencies. These can include sudden and powerful explosions from pressurized systems and highly combustible liquids to treacherous terrain or slick tarmac surfaces. There's also the danger of exposure to toxic chemicals, hazardous cargo, and, with military aircraft, the danger of live weapons. The stress on emergency responders at the scene of a traumatic aircraft event can be exhausting and overwhelming. Professional, peer supporters, chaplains, and mental health professionals should be on hand to provide one-on-one -on -one crisis intervention for emergency personnel showing signs of distress. All protective equipment and clothing has limitations. It is important to understand and not exceed the capabilities of protective equipment. Firefighters who may be exposed to proximity firefighting, such as fuel spill fires that generate high radiant heat, are required to use the proper protective clothing for proximity firefighting. And when responding to an emergency, it should take the ARF personnel no longer than one minute to be fully dressed. Both OSHA and NFPA require that anyone that may be exposed to respiratory hazards must use self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBA. Because the lungs and respiratory tract are more vulnerable to injury than any other part of the body, ARF personnel should not be allowed to participate in any firefighting activities without SCBA. Several companies manufacture SCBAs with different features, construction, and operation, but firefighters are required to use the positive pressure, open circuit, self-contained SCBA. All ARF vehicles should have adequate breathing apparatus and spare cylinders available for the number of firefighters that could be assigned to ride on that vehicle. SCBA equipment should be inspected at the beginning of each shift and after every use. Make sure that the cylinder is within 90% of full, that all gauges work, and that the cylinder and remote gauges are within 100 PSI of each other, that the low pressure alarm sounds briefly when the cylinder valve is turned on and again when the pressure is relieved, that the face piece and harness are in good condition and the harness straps are fully extended, that the valves are operational and bypass valve is fully closed, and that the pass alarm sounds after 30 seconds of non-movement and when triggered manually. It is also important to know how to react when something goes wrong with an SCBA system. Exhausted air supply cylinders are normal, but firefighters should practice changing out each other's cylinders. Some SCBAs are equipped with a connection that allows a firefighter whose SCBA has run out of air or malfunctioned to connect to a fellow firefighter's air supply. If the regulator malfunctions, the bypass valve will permit unregulated airflow to the firefighter. However, certain malfunctions, such as damaged hoses or face pieces, cannot really be worked around. Firefighters should immediately leave the incident scene and change out their equipment. Because of the nature of aircraft incidents, all ARF responders should have current first aid and CPR certifications. Most incidents where the fire service provides medical assistance involve one to five patients. In the event of a large passenger aircraft disaster, multiple casualties and traumatic injuries can overwhelm initial responders, as well as the entire medical system. Most jurisdictions have a multi-casualty incident plan in place to manage a large-scale incident. Leaders are assigned to manage medical, ambulatory, and other teams. In this kind of situation, the fire service will be heavily involved in the rescue, triage, treatment, and transportation of the injured. In any aviation emergency, the bottom line for the fire service is to save lives and help the injured.